While wearing their badges, sometimes police officers are controlled by feelings of immense power on which they believe that they can create and practice law as per their wishes, and that they can put bullets within whoever they like or more so didn't like. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a list of the top 6 corrupt police officers and how they were during their life sentences. Number 6. Daniel Haltzclaw According to his lawyer Daniel Haltzclaw, the former cop from Oklahoma City, who was found guilty of rape and other crimes after preying on African-American women for six months, received the jury's recommended sentence of 263 years in prison. The sentence was delivered a little over a month after accrying four counts of first-degree rape and four instances of forced oral sodomy were among the 18 of the 36 counts on which Holtzclaw was found guilty. According to the prosecution, Holtzclaw chose his victims in one of Oklahoma City's poorest neighborhoods based on their criminal records because he believed that their histories of drug use or institution would disprove any accusations they might make against him. According to the testimony of 13 victims, he would then subject them to assaults that progressed from oral sodomy and groping to rape. Holtzclaw, whose father works as a police lieutenant from a different department, declined to give a statement. Two of those ladies went on record with the media to describe their harrowing experiences of being coerced into various behaviors by a serial rapist with a badge who was supposed to protect and serve them. Where is the national outcry for their justice? Asked Benjamin Crump, who defended the families of Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown criticizing the media. Crump praised the sentence today, saying it was a landmark victory. The defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and set punishment at eight years. Procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition and punishment is set at five years. Defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 20 years. Forcible oral sodomy. Defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 16 years. <laughs> Mr. Holtzclaw, this jury finds you guilty of the various counts. 5. Brandon Boone. In a Bartow courtroom, a former Winter Haven police officer showed up as a defendant. After an encounter with Polk County Jail, Brandon Boone was accused of violence. Boone is shown on security footage from inside the jail, kneeling down and striking a handcuffed inmate before leading him into a dimly lit area. Ronald Agustin, the prisoner, alleges that Boone and other cops pummeled him and shattered his leg. Boone vehemently disputes any wrongdoing on his part. Boone's attorney informed the judge during a hearing on the case's status that he had been unable to settle the matter amicably with the state attorneys. Your Honor, we've been trying to resolve this with the state. It seems we're not going to resolve it. It's going to be a trial case, said attorney Walt Otto. Otto advised the judge that there will be a large number of witnesses and he has not had a chance to interview them all. A trial date in the case has, however, not been set yet. Number 4. Michael Dottro before receiving a 20-year prison sentence for setting fire to a senior officer's home while the police captain and his family were inside asleep, former Edison police officer Michael Dautro scratched his neck and forehead but showed no remorse. He showed no remorse for the witness he tampered with, the family of Captain Mark Anderko, who was forced to evacuate the burning house or the other officers who lost their careers as a result of their association with him. Dautro remained silent throughout the almost hour-long sentencing hearing before Superior Court Judge Pedro Jimenez Jr. as Middle County Prosecutor Andrew Carey, Edison Police Chief Thomas Bryan, and Anderco and his wife watched. Dautro must spend 17 years before he is eligible for parole. The sentence was worked out as part of a plea bargain with Assistant Prosecutor Russell Curley and relates to offenses Dautro committed over a five-year period. She's caused very specific damage to Captain and Dirk and his family, but what he's really done and what we're going to be left with after he's walking out the door is allow people a basis to say that our system of justice has no one. 3. Michael C. Pale A former Rochester police officer who was found guilty of hitting a city citizen while being arrested was given three years of probation rather than serving time in the Monroe County Jail. Michael Siepel was given a sentence by City Court Judge Thomas Rainbow Morse for attacking Christopher Pate. Siepel was found guilty by Morse in May of third-degree assault, a misdemeanor. During an arrest in May 2018, Siepel struck Christopher Pate in the face after mistaking him for a burglary suspect. A face fracture was sustained by Pate. Pate, according to Siepel, started a violent altercation and resisted arrest. Before imposing the punishment, 
Moore spoke for about 90 minutes, going into great detail about his reasoning for coming to the conclusion that Seafal's use of physical force was excessive. You should have restrained yourself that day, Morse told Seifel. Morse noted that Seifel had received both a Bronze Star and a Purple Heart during his service in the U.S. Army before serving as a police officer in New York City and later in Rochester. It is not an excuse for what happened, Morse observed, but part of the reason for what happened was a result of the PTSD from your years of service in the Army as a decorated war hero and your service to the community. Morse insisted that he wasn't in the business of sending messages with his words, but he did spend a lot of time pleading with the Rochester Police Department to create initiatives that would let officers get support for the trauma they encountered at work without worrying that doing so would jeopardize their jobs. Number 2. William Demby Jr. While the perpetrator was serving a life sentence in an Ohio jail, the uncle of the woman who was killed by her husband screamed insults at him. William Damby Jr. was found responsible for throwing Holly, 33, out of their home's window and stabbing her to death in August 2011. One of Holly's kin had to be held and escorted from the courtroom after screaming at Demby as the 45-year-old was sentenced. You twice slashed her throat. She was cut eight times by you. You murderer with cold blood, Leslie Gregg yelled. I've had enough. As his family and court personnel restrained him, his remarks occurred after Demby accused Cheryl Foldays, his mother-in-law, of neglecting to adequately look after his seven-year-old son. After killing Holly at their Grafton Township home, the former correctional officer had previously been found guilty of murder, felonious assault, and domestic abuse. On August 11, after a fight, Damby chased his wife upstairs while brandishing a battle knife. He took off her shirt and pants as she attempted to flee, and after breaking into the bathroom on the second story where she was trying to jump out the window, he stabbed her before letting her go. After continuing to stab his wife in the neck and running outdoors, the father of four calmly called the police and said that he had almost beheaded his wife. Number 1. Eric DeVolcanaire A former Kansas City police officer sentenced to six years in prison for the 2019 shooting death of a black man who was backing a pickup vehicle into his garage will be released on bond while his conviction is appealed. According to Valerie Hartman, a spokeswoman for the 16th Judicial Circuit Court, white male Eric DeVolcanaire received sentences of three years for the involuntary manslaughter of Cameron Lamb and six years for armed criminal behavior. Judge James Dale Youngs ordered that the sentences be carried out consecutively after finding DeVolcanaire guilty in a bench trial in November, according to Hartman. During a press conference after the hearing, Lori Bay, Lamb's mother, referred to the verdict as a fair conclusion. The mental pain that I deal with, that's not going to go away, Bay said. Preferably, it will shake up this police department, shake up Kansas City, added Lamb's stepfather, Akel Bay. Defense attorneys had requested DeVolcanaire remain free following his sentencing as they appeal his November conviction. Judge Youngs granted that request last month because he didn't think incarceration was necessary while the appeal was pending, Youngs remarked. He's known that since November and yet here he is. He's known that since November and yet here he is, Young said. If he was a flight risk, I don't know what I would have waited if I were Mr. DeVolcanaire, said Judge Youngs. According to the affiliate, the judge had never before in his 13 years on the court granted such an appeal bond. According to the indictment, the fatal shooting occurred on December 3, 2019, when DeVolcanaire and his colleague went to a traffic collision involving a red pickup truck in Kansas City. A red pickup truck had been seen by a police aircraft driving and pulling into a driveway behind a house. According to the indictment, the cops entered the rear of the house without a valid warrant and in plain clothes while brandishing police department vests. When he arrived, Vaughner's partner was on Lamb's side of the pickup truck and could see Lamb slowly backing the vehicle into the basement garage. The cops tried to get Lamb to stop, but it's not clear if he heard him, according to the indictment. The Volknaer claimed to have seen Lamb's left hand reach for a gun and point it at his companion while firing four times at Lamb. I remember thinking, no, this can't happen. I can't let this happen, the Volknaer said on the witness stand during the trial. With that, we've come to the end of today's video. If you have any more instances of these cops receiving such sentences, let us know in the comments down below. See you all in the next video. Until then, goodbye for now.